We smell like them? <sighs> oh, yeah. We need, we need more guts. Oh. No. All right, folks, so today I am here to explore the topic of camouflage in the Walking Dead universe. For those of you who don't know, camouflage is the act of using different means to blend in with the dead, and in some cases, even live among them. Walkers use smell to differentiate the dead from the living, explaining why they don't just eat each other. Although walkers don't breathe, so who knows how they actually smell. Today, I'm going to present four different techniques for camouflage. If you think of one that I may have missed, please let me know in the comments down below. And while you're down there, if you're feeling generous, hit that sub button as well. Probably the most commonly used and widely known form of camouflage is the act of applying the insides of reanimated bodies directly onto the skin, clothes, or other form of covering. The earliest on-screen examples of this trick being used is from Rick and Glenn in Season 1, Episode 2. But the earliest example of a survivor discovering the trick in the timeline is Nicholas Clark in Fear the Walking Dead Season 2, Episode 3. Although the smell is the biggest contributing factor as to why the walkers don't attack, one cannot simply run through a horde and not expect to get eaten alive. Although walkers are not living, they still want to eat. So if you draw attention to yourself in an unnatural way, the dead will know you don't belong and attack anyway. The trick will also fail in the event of rain washing away the smell. However, if none of these variables are a factor in your journey of walking with the dead, the guts applied can camouflage you and stay effective for days. Evident from Magna and Connie's journey with the Whisperer Horde in Season 10, and again with Aaron's group later on in Season 11. The amount of blood and guts required to blend in seems to vary between writing teams, as we see examples such as Luciana in Season 2 of Fear very lightly apply blood to her face and still blend in, while the other examples see survivors cover themselves from head to toe. This may seem like an overall solid way to overcome the dead, but covering yourself in rotten, boiled insides can cause other complications, and actually be incredibly dangerous. Who would have thought? It's stated by June Dory in Fear the Walking Dead, she witnessed survivors become extremely ill from using the guts trick. We can see this echoed in The Walking Dead Season 8 as Gabriel got sick and eventually was blinded in one eye from an infection. Theorized by Eugene to have contracted influenza, or crypto... crypto... some of these words are really difficult. <laughs> Influenza or whatever this word is from the technique. If we're getting really specific here, we can even see Alicia Clark in Fear Season 7 use a walker's own guts as camouflage before following it, showing us the dead can even be fooled by their own smell. Most survivors have the common sense to not directly apply the guts to their skin, instead using coverings or ponchos, but others seem to not really give a shit. We see less and less survivors directly applying guts to their skin as the timeline goes on, so most of these brave souls probably succumb to infection or smartened up over time. If a survivor is in a tight situation and doesn't have the time to cut the walker open, they can simply lay the body over themselves for the same effect. The odor will be strong enough to overcome even the smell of fresh blood, as seen by T-Dog on the highway in Season 2 Episode 1. While the guts trick is an effective way to blend in with the dead, it's not as foolproof as some may think, as the risk of getting sick is pretty high with this technique. Probably the least ideal way to blend in with the dead, in Season 6 Episode 1 of Fear the Walking Dead, Morgan is suffering from a gunshot wound that becomes so infected that the flesh around it begins rotting. The smell was so strong and Morgan was so close to death, the walkers couldn't even distinguish him from a living person. Morgan most likely would not have recovered from this injury in a real life scenario, but in the world of fear, he did. So if you find yourself near death from injuries in the apocalypse, at least you can pass knowing the dead won't rip you apart. 
This is not an effective way to blend in with the dead and has only been shown in this isolated incident in the TV universe. But as Morgan survived, I thought it would be appropriate to include regardless. The only comparable scenario could be argued in Telltale's The Walking Dead Season 4, as Minerva is camouflaged due to being bit several times, and already being far along into the infection process. However, she was also covered in guts, so who knows if this situation really applies. I know the comic universe has different rules than the TV universe, but I wanted to include it regardless as it's the only other comparable example we have. Acting as a less risky version of the guts trick, the earliest on-screen discovery of this technique was made by Michonne as early as Season 2 by accident. She wanted to keep two walkers she knew in life as prisoners as punishment for both herself and them. A pet is created when a walker's ability to eat or attack is taken away, usually by removing the arms and breaking the jaw, turning it docile, as without the ability to eat, the walker simply will lose the desire. In the early days, Michonne discovered the other walkers would leave her alone when in the vicinity of her pets, and act as protection on her journeys across the wasteland. But the walkers surrounding someone with pets will not attack the survivor unless attention is brought to them, much like the guts trick. If a walker is not reacting to the living person beside them, the other walkers in the surrounding area will not be alerted to the survivor. This could either be due to the smell of the pets overtaking the survivor's scent, or the act of simply not attacking will make the other walkers not attack, as no stimuli is alerting them to food. Using pets appears to be a less risky version of the guts trick, but still poses its dangers if not performed properly. Probably the most creative form of camouflage comes in skin suits. This technique was used by the Whisperers as early as two to three years into the outbreak. A skin suit is made through the process of skinning a dead walker and curing the leather, in order to avoid sickness when applying to the survivor's skin, unlike the guts trick. This will allow the survivor to blend in and move among the dead, and in the case of the Whisperers, live among the dead. In most cases throughout the Whisperer arc, we see whispers appear to only don full head masks to blend in. It's unclear how much skin is actually needed for the trick to work, as we see cases such as Dante in Season 10 wear a full chest piece as well. It's possible the whispers could have a layer of skin underneath their clothes as we see them curing more than just mask skin, but from what we are shown, it's hard to determine. A contributing factor to this could be the animalistic lifestyle of the whispers, Living outside year-round without proper hygiene could possibly add to the smell. But possibly the most unique case of skin being used as camouflage comes in the tales of The Walking Dead episode, Dr. Everett and Amy. As Dr. Everett expresses a variation of this method by covering his jacket with walker skin, allowing him to study the dead in safety. The only real downside of this technique is the moral implication of wearing another human's skin, but that doesn't seem to really be a factor for survivors in the TV universe as Negan and Maggie use this technique against the Reapers in Season 11. In the comics, however, this method is abandoned as Dwight declares it a disgusting practice. In my opinion, this is the most effective way to not only move with the dead, but live among them as well. Cured skin has the least risk factor behind it. The only exception being when attention is drawn to oneself but this applies to all the techniques discussed today. Camouflage is absolutely a necessary tool for those surviving in the wasteland. The prospect of the dead no longer being a threat makes me think most survivors would be experimenting left and right with these techniques, especially with the ability to steer the dead, given enough practice. The only unforeseen downside to these techniques would be the risk of being mistaken for a walker by another survivor. But this topic deserves to be explored further in the Walking Dead universe, especially now as the timeline is so far ahead. But let me know what you thought about the camouflage techniques we explored today in the comments down below. If you like this video and want to see more topics like this explored, be sure to hit that like button and be sure to hit that sub button as well if you're feeling generous. Thanks for watching, folks.